In Genesis chapter 7, verse 11, we read this about Noah and the ark. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, and on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. Welcome to the Ark and the Dove Worldwide, where in the 1967th year after the birth of Jesus, in the same second month, and on the same 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and at this retreat center called the Ark and the Dove, the Holy Spirit fell on a group of college students from Duquesne University, and the world has never been the same since. It was here that these college students experienced what we read in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. The love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The flame that began at the Ark and the Dove in 1967 has spread like wildfire to the entire world. Today, more than 120 million Catholics and countless other Christians in every country of the world have experienced baptism in the Holy Spirit. As we approach Pentecost during this worldwide pandemic, the Ark and the Dove seeks to share with the world the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. For the seven days leading up to Pentecost, we will air a Life in the Spirit seminar. Each day we will cover the traditional topics of God's love, salvation, new life, God's gifts, baptism in the Holy Spirit, growth and transformation. We have musicians and presenters from around the world to help lead this seminar. Then, on Pentecost Day, the 31st of May 2020, we will release the premiere of the story of the Duquesne Weekend. The Ark and the Dove has produced a film with two participants of the original Duquesne Weekend, David Mangan and Patty Gallagher Mansfield, providing a tour of the retreat center and giving us their reflections of that now famous weekend. The Ark and the Dove is a worldwide ministry. The teachings this week will be in English with Spanish and Portuguese subtitles, but the music and the testimonies will be in the language of the presenter. The mission of the Ark and the Dove worldwide is to foster unity and to pass the grace of baptism in the Holy Spirit to all generations. Join with us this week as we share the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in this week leading up to Pentecost. Then, on Pentecost Day, join with us for the premiere release of The Story of the Duquesne Weekend. The seventh session of the Life in the Spirit seminar is titled Transformation in Christ. Our scripture is from Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Our music for this session is by Leslie Bertucci from New Orleans here in the United States. Our testimony is from Brother James Shin out of Korea, and our teaching will be from Cyril John out of India. All sessions will be in English, the music, the testimony, and the talk. Enjoy this seventh session, Transformation in Christ. Greetings in the Lord, brothers and sisters. As we prepare to celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, let's just take a few moments to worship the Lord who is worthy of our praise. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to come and set a fire in our souls, a fire that we can't contain, that we can't control. Let's say, Lord, we want more of you. Give us more of you in our lives. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place 
place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. To share my testimony, let me start with Gospel John 3:7. You must be born from above. As you know, when I was young, I'm very sad and unhappy. 
because my family had no food, no money, no health, and no even peace. My parents had fought every day so often. I remember I was weeping with tears when I received baptism at the cathedral. It was my second birth of my life. When I was a resident of internal medicine at the CMC, my father passed away of lung cancer. A few days before he passed away, he said to me, My son, I had one hope to you. I want you to not live not for yourself, but for others who are poor, sick, and abandoned. I replied to him, Father, Yes, I will follow your last will. You know, I went to Kotongne immediately after I finished my medical training. I had to take care of over 1,000 patients only by me. No time to rest, no holidays. So, I was too tired to continue my work to take care of them. Furthermore, one grandmother patient died suddenly. She had complained many things to us every day, and she did not forgive those who abandoned her. The last word she left was a resentment and curse for this world. I was so sorry for that. I couldn't save her soul. I wanted to run away from Kotone, but they need me and I also need them. So I prayed to the Lord, Lord, give me a spirit. Please make me a spiritual healer. So finally, after a year, one year prayer, I received baptism with the Holy Spirit. I was overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit, full of joy and peace. I heard the message, I'll make you a spiritual healer as well as physical doctor. It was my third birth of my life, new beginning of my religious life. I was totally changed. One day, a paraplegia patient came to see me, complaining uh, insomnia with dyspepsia and anxiety and sleep disturbance. After I took examination, I felt it was not the physical problem, but the spiritual origin. So instead of laboratory study and radiology study, I prayed over him. Suddenly, he fell down from the wheelchair and prostrated on the floor. I was embarrassed, and I thought it must be a medical emergency. So I was hurried to check up his blood pressure and pulse, but he was snoring in deep sleep. I knew that he had hated one person very much, but the power of the Holy Spirit, his heart was changed to forgive the enemy. It was a small miracle that they met together and reconciled together. He became symptom-free after forgiveness. This is how I started my charismatic life. But it was not easy for me to continue my service for the poor in Godongne. I have been praying for to follow the heart, sacred heart of Jesus as a servant of the poor. Jesus asked his disciples, Mark chapter 10, verse 38, are you able to be baptized with the baptism with which I am to be baptized? It was the baptism of suffering, death on the cross. Jesus is asking me the same question. I answer him, Yes, Lord, I want to receive the baptism of suffering as you did it. It will be my fourth birth, which is the eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. A hearty welcome to the seventh session 
of the Life in the Spirit seminar. I am Cyril John from India. I thank the Ark and the Dow for inviting me to be part of this project of Life in the Spirit seminar. Today we are going to reflect on transformation. I want to share about myself. In 1982, after I attended my first Life in the Spirit seminar, when I returned home, I felt as if I was floating in the spirit. I felt very high. I was filled with the spirit. I was very excited. And I am sure this is what you are experiencing now. That you have said not to sin. You have said yes to the Lord. You have become the sons and daughters of God. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit. So I would like to give a big clap for each one of you. You know, give, give a kind of applause for each one of you as you have said yes to the Lord and committed your life to Him. Now, when I attended the Life in the Spirit seminar, as I returned home, I felt I was the holiest man on earth. I had become a saint already. But as I started living my life at home, in the office, in my parish, in the society, I realized that the old self that was within me was still there. It was raising its ugly head from time to time. And that is the time I came to this realization. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Not that I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. So I'm not a perfect, but I press on to make it my own. I'm trying to achieve this. So I am in this process. So when I attend the Life in the Spirit seminar, when you have attended the Life in the Spirit seminar, the Lord is drawing us into a deeper union with Him and with others. And also trying to give us a fuller experience of the new life. The Lord is also trying to make us realize the need to turn away from our wrongdoings and to reorder our priorities and say no to those less important things in our life. I realize after 38 years that the Lord is still working on me. I am an unfinished product still. So the Lord continues to do it right from our Life in the Spirit seminar and this process goes on. We have been told in the scripture and by the church fathers that within us we have the old self and the new self. We have the flesh and the spirit. So there is always a battle between the two. Now when we reflect on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is presented to us in the image of fire. Fire is something that we are afraid of. But here is a holy fire, a divine fire that is going to sanctify us. A divine fire that is going to refine us. So the Holy Spirit is going to be a purifier and a refiner in our life, trying to transform us 
into new beings. So in this process of growth, there are going to be trials and difficulties that we are going to face. There are going to be doubts coming up. There are going to be fears. There is going to be self-pity. There is going to be temptation. There is going to be dryness in prayer. There are going to be misunderstandings that we are going to face. But do not worry about it. Because these are all going to be opportunities for us to grow. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. God works for the good in everything with those whom, who love him. So for those who love him, everything works out for the good, even the temporary trials and tribulations. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So in this process, you know, we are not conformed to the world. We are being transformed that we are able to discern what is good and acceptable to God. So we need to remember that in this process, we are deformed people and we are being reformed in the process of being transformed. We are deformed in our thinking, in our imagination, in our words, in our deeds, in our habits, in our attitudes, in our dispositions. And we are also, you know, attached to the things of this world, the pleasures, the riches, the comforts, the selfishness. And by our nature, we are not inclined towards the holy things like the Holy Bible, the Holy Rosary, the Holy Mass, the, the Holy Eucharist and all that. So we are people who are in the process of growth. Now, in this process, I just want to give you a little reflection. You know, when I was a child, uh, my father used to say, you know, plug the grass in the courtyard of our house in our village. So we used to plug out the leaves of the grass. After a couple of days, we used to find that the grass was again coming up in the same place. Why? Because when we were plugging the leaves of the grass, the roots were still there. This is the same in our spiritual life. We need to uproot some of the evils, some of the bad habits, some of the sinful nature within us. So as we are moving forward, it is going to be like a swim against the current because the human nature, the old self is flowing against us, working against us. So that is why we need to be reformed by renewing of our minds. And in this process, you know, we look at St. Augustine. St. Augustine, he experienced a conversion. So for him, it was more difficult to live the conversion than to be get converted. Because after his conversion, he had the same woman in the neighborhood who used to call out Augustine, Augustine. So at one stage, Augustine said, Lord, give me chastity, give me self-control, but not yet. 
he was still struggling with this so we need to be reformed in this process and then we will be transformed so that transformation process is called the sanctification I need not be holy to receive the Holy Spirit but I need to become holy to retain the Holy Spirit to live in the Spirit so the Holy Spirit does the first thing in our life is trying to make us holy Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled so we need to be really thirsty and hungry for righteousness and let us remember that the holiness the righteousness is not confined to only one area of our life our spiritual life no it is there in every sphere of our life it is there in our in our in what we speak in what we do in what we think everything everything it is in our family in our society in our business in our office it has to reflect everywhere that is why when we have the baptism in the Holy Spirit what the Lord starts doing in our life is like this that he turns us off from the things that are of the world and turns us on to things that are from the Spirit so the things that are of the world the, the Lord is trying to put us off so that we turn more to the things that are from the Lord so how is he doing it John chapter 16 verse 8 and when he comes he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment so when we do wrong things the Holy Spirit will convict us now I have a friend of mine who shared this with me after his life in the spirit seminar experience he said when he attended the life in the spirit seminar he was working in a five-star hotel restaurant where there was a racket going on where they would you know kind of kind of take away the money that is supposed to go to the hotel like they present you a bill for 60 US dollars but what goes to the account would be 50 not 50 30 US dollars so like they would be siphoning off about 30 US dollars so this was something that was going on after he attended a life in the spirit seminar he said the Holy Spirit convicted me not to do this and then he said no to this to his companions another gentleman told me after he attended the life in the spirit seminar he realized that because he has been watching porn movies for a long time you know whenever he sees somebody of the opposite gender when he sees a photograph a picture impure thoughts evil desires used to come to him and he says after the life in the spirit seminar the Lord convicted me in this area and he says then he started reading more God's Word he started reading more the lives of the Saints he started spending more time in prayer he started spending more time before the Eucharistic Lord to come out of this to cleanse his mind to cleanse his eyes from these evil effects on his life so you know one of the things that the popes have been lamenting has been this that there has been a loss of sense of sin in this world for example you know our approach towards abortion our approach towards forn fornication our approach towards same-sex unions our approach towards living relationships 
our approach towards artificial birth control. So many of these things, you know, we have perverted views. So we need to be renewed, transformed in these areas. So the spirit will continuously direct us in these areas in our lives. If you are watching more sports, if you are watching too much of WhatsApp and too much of cartoons, too much of movies, these are all areas where the Lord is going to convict us. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 and 17 Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. So now there is this constant battle within us. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23-24 May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. Now, holiness is not easy, but at the same time, it is not complex, but simple. Now, holiness does not mean that you have not sinned. Let us not have this, this impression in our mind. A saint is someone who has sinned, but who has been forgiven by God. When Pope Francis was asked, who is George Mario Bergoglio, he said, I am a sinner who has been looked upon by God. So that is a saint. A saint has to, you know, when he falls, he has to get up, he has to dust and move forward. Now in this process, I also just want to share with you, you know, a tip that will help you to grow. You know, when I had my first life in the spirit seminar. I came back and I never ever went to any fellowship like a prayer meeting or a community. Now what happened is that for years I was not bearing fruit. It was after this that I attended another life in the spirit seminar where the preacher explained to me something like this. You know, when you put the logs of wood together and put fire to it, it burns. Now you pull those logs apart and the fire dies down. So we need to be part of a fellowship. We need to belong to a community. We need to belong to a prayer group to sustain this new life that we have received. A prayer group or a community is the gathering of men and women whose lives are centered on Jesus, whose relationships are built around a prayer meeting and other shared activities. So in a prayer group, you know, you have the praise and worship, you have use of charisms, you have the sharing of the word of God, you have intercession, you have fellowship, and it helps us to grow. It gives us an environment to use the charisms, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you are not part of a community, then we are bound to fall apart. And then these graces that we have received may not stay with us for a long time. So we need to really nourish these graces that we have received, but water it through our participation in a fellowship. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. A prayer group or community operates on the special promise of the Lord 
in Matthew chapter 18 20 where two or three are gathered together in my name there I am in the midst of them so let us resolve to be part of a community or a prayer group in our parishes when you go back if there is one or please begin the initiative take the initiative of starting a prayer group or a community to which you could belong let us close our eyes and take a decision in this regard offering our lives to the Lord to be a part of a fellowship Amen.